Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. I rise in support of SB 483. Uh, I think first I need to address my colleagues of my own party who know a lot about the federal constitution. I love the federal constitution. I even love to, to read the book, The Federalist Papers, and think about constitutional law. And it's different on the state level. We are not the United States Congress. We are the state of Nevada. The Founding Fathers wanted limited government, but when they were talking, they were talking about the federal government. They always wanted a very vigorous state and local government. That's what they fought for. Uh, as you know, in the federal constitution, we have Article I, Section 8, which limits what the federal government should do. It's a list of things that the, the federal government should do. And I would be the first one to, to argue that the federal government is operating, is operating way outside the scope of Article I, Section 8. And I would vote against tax increases on the federal level. But it is different in the state, the state of Nevada. All of us took an oath the very first day to support the Nevada Constitution as well as the federal constitution. And I wonder how many of us have read the Nevada Constitution. Let me quote something for you. Here's Article 11, Section 6, Subsection 2. During a regular session of the legislature, before any other appropriation is enacted to fund a portion of the state budget for the next ensuing biennium, the legislature shall enact one or more appropriations to provide the money the legislator, legislature deems to be sufficient when combined with the local money reasonably available for this purpose to fund the operation of the public schools in the state for kindergarten through grade 12 for the next ensuing biennium for the population reasonably estimated for that biennium. That's a lot of legal language. Basically what it says is we have, we have to fund education first. And if you keep reading that section, the same applies to special sessions. Now, I know everyone in here likes to live up to their oaths and their camping promises. You know, it's easy to sit at home and spout the party line, and I did it based on my limited knowledge of our state's archaic tax system and significant challenges in public education. I initially opposed the proposed budget and new tax plan, again, based on my limited knowledge at the time. But in the last few weeks, I have spent many hours talking to legislators and lobbyists, both in favor of and opposed to the budget and tax plan, studying proposed plans, analyzing the budget cuts over the past few sessions, questioning the architects of the competing tax plans, and just thinking. I gradually changed my mind, and now honestly feel that Governor Sandoval's, Sandoval's plan for education reform budget and new tax plan is right for our state. The revenue plan is not perfect, but it is elegant in that it balances taxation more appropriately, more appropriately over a broader scope of businesses and better reflects the changing economy of the state of Nevada. What really finally convinced me was hearing from the heads of economic development throughout the state that they want this bill because many companies have refused to come to Nevada, not because of taxes, but because of our poor education system. They want their employees to be able to send their children to good schools. And they want employees they can hire who are ready to work. We owe this to the rising generation. This building has been here before any of us serving here started to serve. And it will be here long after we leave. And it's a sacred trust that we have here and a great privilege to serve here. And I know you all feel that way. We may disagree on how to get there, but I honestly feel that every member of this body in good faith wants to do what's best for our, our citizens and our constituents. And if we disagree on how to get there, we should not lower, oursel lower <coughs> ourselves to personal attacks and questioning each other's integrity. We have to do what we think is right. 
after doing our due diligence. That's the word we use in corporate law, and I think you all know what that means. And I have done months of due diligence, as all of you have. And maybe it's because I'm you know, almost 60, but I'm not to be afraid to say I was uninformed. I made a mistake. I sat and spouted the party line of no new taxes, no matter what. And I dare say that uh, there are some philosophies that even if ISIS were storming our building to kill us all, we wouldn't raise a penny in taxes. And I don't think that's appropriate. This is a representative body. I had an interesting chat with my beloved wife last night, had another one with her this morning, and she supports me. But I had to explain to her that you need to give us the benefit of the doubt. I've sat through hours and hours and hours of hearings like you have. I've sat down with the architect of this tax plan and the proponents of the tax plan and the opponents and the proponents, everybody, and everybody in between. And I've come to the conclusion that this is best. And uh, I know that I've offended a number of my very best friends, both in this assembly and in my home. And a number of my constituents are calling me. And they're even calling my wife, saying, what is your husband doing? You know, it's funny. Before I came here, I was a right-wing extremist. Now I'm a rhino. <laughs> I, I, fine, call me what you will. You know, I've thought about this. I've fasted. I've prayed. And I think this is the right thing to do. And I think you can come to a different conclusion based on your personal experience. I've had some lobbyists who were, I thought, my best friends until two days ago. <laughs> and now, all of a sudden, I have no integrity. Uh, I'm not doing what I really think is in my heart. And I've been cajoled and threatened by the governor's office, according to them. And someone even suggested I've been promised things from the governor's office. So I took the bait and said, yes, that's true. I was promised a judgeship. And someone said, really? Wow. And I said, no. And for the record, I'd like to state that Governor Sandoval and his entire staff, Governor Sandoval has been a perfect gentleman through this whole thing to me. He has never pressured me. He has answered my questions. He has never threatened me. And he's never promised me anything. And same with his staff. And I resent any, any insinuations to the contrary. This is not question three. This is a different tax. It has been modified a lot. It reflects our growing and changing economy. When 70% of our economy is services, we can't continue to tax 30% and build what I think is a, a, a shack and keep adding chimneys and new floors and hoping it won't fall down. We have to broaden the base, and this tax does that. It also will reach companies that are making millions of dollars in Nevada, but because they don't have any employees, they don't pay a cent in tax. I had a very good conversation with someone the other day who told me that his company just purchased millions and millions of dollars from an out-of-state computer company. And I'm not going to say the name, but you would all recognize it. It's a Fortune 100 company. And all the state of Nevada got out of that was a small use tax, just because that company's not here. This new commerce tax will reach some of those things. And the, uh, the $4 million floor, hopefully, will never be lowered. Of course, we cannot bind future legislatures, but hopefully it won't. When I ran, the first thing I said was, I'm promoting economic development. The second thing I said was, I want to keep a stable tax base. I think with this bill, I can do both of those things. The third thing I said was, let's let the sunset sunset. And I'm going to have to break that promise. But with Mr. Hansen's amendment, it's only for two more years. And hopefully, the economy will continue to grow, and, and we can reevaluate that. But at this point, oh, wait, did that fail? I apologize. <laughs> <laughs> Never mind. Uh, I'm, I'm getting off my notes. Uh, and I haven't slept too much in the last three days. But anyway, to wind up, as I said, I've changed my mind. I, support, I, I, I hope my colleagues will support this 
this bill. Thank you. Assemblywoman Woodbury.